Yeah, what's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube subscribers, Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It's Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video. Uh, first things first, <laughs> I just, I just, I just gotta say this real quick. It looks like I may be wearing a regular black T-shirt, but in fact, I am not wearing a regular black T-shirt. I am wearing the big cat, the Lion King. Leonard Williams the lot okay there that direction Leonard Williams the Lion King shirt all right uh, one of two new designs up on the hubs teespring store if you guys like this merch go in the description check it out click the link uh, maybe buy a few you know what I'm saying that directly supports the channel and yeah that's really all I gotta say I got one other one that I'm gonna show you guys um in person maybe Sunday or Monday we'll see how it goes but enough about that Let's talk about what we're here to talk about. All right, the Giants and their rookies. And, well, I know the preseason game is tomorrow. All right, I know the first preseason game is tomorrow. Maybe I should be talking about that a little bit. Maybe I should be talking about how that Joe Judge wants to run it as if it would be the fourth preseason game in a regular offseason, which means we're only going to see bottom of the guy rosters that are battling it out to try and even make the team. Right, the whole reason I think he's even treating it as a fourth preseason game in general is because I'm pretty sure after this first preseason game, roster cuts need to be made and they need to be cut down to 90 man rosters. So it makes sense. We're not really going to see starters tomorrow. We're going to see the second and third team, the third team mostly, in my opinion. But that's really all I have to say about that because I, what I really want to talk about is should we be worried about the fact that for the Giants, only two of our six, I think it was six, drafted rookies have really seen the field. This offseason, whether it was involuntary minicamp, OTAs, or mandatory training camp, mandatory minicamp as well, right? Only two out of the six. Those two being Zizo Jalari and Rodarius Williams. And I, and I will say, I've been told you, man, I've been told y'all about this man, Rodarius Williams, from the moment he was drafted. I like I remember being asked, you know, if I had to pick somebody other than Aziz, who was my favorite pick, it was Rodarius, because he should not have gone in the sixth round. Rodarius was a cornerback that should have gone in the second or third round, in my opinion. Somehow slipped all the way to six. I ain't complaining because the Giants scooped him up and he's making an impact right away. All right, now Aaron Robinson has been out with an abdominal injury, I believe. So we haven't exactly gotten to see what he looks like on the field yet against our offense and playing within our defense. But we have gotten to see that with Rodarius Williams and he's making all the right moves and all the right plays. He's been reading the eyes correctly. He's been breaking up passes. He's been even getting interceptions. He's been doing everything he should be doing and even looking a bit calm and composed out there on the field, impressing guys such as Logan Ryan and more recently, Adoree Jackson. And then of course with Aziz, he's just been doing his thing. We haven't heard anything bad um, about him out of training camp. We haven't heard anything amazing like we have with Rodarius, but I have a feeling that's just because Rodarius performing as good as he is is more shocking than say if Aziz will be performing as good as he is but we'll see how it goes because once again it's still early and that's part of what this video is about why i think no we shouldn't be freaking out about the fact that only two out of our six rookies have really hit the field and we've seen them so far i will always defend Kadarius tony our first round pick the wide receiver out of florida there's a reason he has you know missed a good amount of time I'm not gonna lie to y'all it's a good amount of time it's been it's been quite some time he's missed on the field but most of it hasn't even been his fault you could say all of it hasn't been his fault the equipment managers was the reasons the first couple of times with his shoe and for those y'all say oh why does he want to go out there and play barefoot or something or you know play with the incorrect size of cleats that's that's how you get that's how you tear something in your leg in your calf that's how you get injured bro um pff, come on now be smarter than that and then of course he had the family emergency early this year which may or may not be the same thing as when his grandmother recently passed away. That was like last week or the week before. Of course, Kadarius as well was on the COVID list at one point. And now he's slowly being worked back in to the field. Now, I think there may be some type of minor injury we're not being told about. Or maybe it is just after effects of COVID. Remember how Miles Garrett was coming off of COVID. He took a couple weeks to get back to normal. Will Hernandez never looked normal after it. It could be anything. But one thing we know is that it's not his dedication to the game, which people love to question for some reason. You go to um, Aaron Robinson, I already said he's had his abdominal injury. I'm not sure if he's had any type of procedure done on it, but that's the whole reason he hasn't really seen the field. Ellerson Smith, I'm not exactly too sure what the thing is there. I mean, it could just be he's buried in the depth chart. 
There's no injury that comes to mind that I remember any reporters talking about. It literally could be that he's just a little bit buried on the depth chart. And the same goes for Gary Brightwell as well, because we've been seeing a lot of Corey Clement, a lot of Devontae Booker, a good amount of Alfred Morris. Those have really been the running backs we're seeing in terms of who's on the field. But I'm not worried at all. I think a lot of reasons some Giants fans are worried is because of how good and how impactful our rookie class was in 2020. You know, I made a whole video about this at the end of the season. The Giants 2020 draft class, when you compare it to the rest of the NFL, in my opinion, was the best draft class because they had the most impact on their team immediately. You know what I'm saying? All, except for I think it was Chris Williamson out of Minnesota, the cornerback that we drafted last year in the seventh round. Other than him, every single one of our picks played in games. And I'm pretty sure almost all of them started or played starter type snaps. That had, and we had 10 picks last year, right? So nine of those 10 were out there and were a legitimate integral part of the team. Of course, Andrew Thomas was starting. McKinney towards the end came in. Who was our third round pick last year? Why am I forgetting that? Yeah, Matt Purr had good snaps throughout the entire year. Darnay Holmes became a starter some way through that and he's currently a starter right now. Um, fifth round pick, Shane Lemieux saw a good time. Sixth round pick, who was that? Who was our sixth round pick? I can't think, I think it was Cam Brown. And of course, Cam Brown and Carter Coughlin, a seventh round pick. At one point, they were our legitimate like starting edge rushers because the amount of position, I mean, the amount of people at that position that we had injured. You know, Mr. Irrelevant Tay Crowder turned out to be a really good uh, inside linebacker. Like our 2020 rookie class is low key kind of an anomaly. You're not going to see that much anywhere else, but I'm glad for it because, you know, they helped out. And once again, had a bigger impact than any other team's rookie class that year. And I feel like that's why some Giants fans are, are, you know, feeling a little bit worried about the fact that this current rookie class might not have the same type of impact. The thing is, that they don't need to. I'm be honest, the only person I really, really want to see out the field out of the rookies that currently aren't seeing the field would be Kadarius. But even then, I'm going to be comfortable with Slayton. I mean, I, I believe that Slayton was going to take the, his job anyway. From the beginning and Kadarius is gonna see some like you know legit snaps next year like Kadarius in my opinion is definitely a wide receiver for the future not necessarily for now that's not saying he can't play now don't twist my words you know what I'm saying but I'm happy that we got our edge in there and I'm happy that at least one of our corners is showing up and showing out in Rodarius um not really too concerned about Brightwell not really too concerned um you know about Aaron Robinson because I mean once again Rodarius is there we got Darnay we got a stack secondary not really concerned about Ellerson because even him, I've been saying, is a project pick. He's not really going to make an impact his first year. Um, I think that you guys should kind of take the same look out as me. If you don't, let me know why. Put it down in the comments below right now. You know what I mean? And that's not to say I'm not worried about how they're going to perform. I'm just not taking much stock into the fact that they're not on the field right now. And for all we know, by the time the third preseason game rolls around, all of them will see the field. So it's just a wait and see type of situation. But that's it for now. You guys let me know what you think. Put your thoughts and comments down below. Like, share, subscribe. Check out the merch. And I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.